Right lads, welcome back to my team career mode. We have the Hungarian Grand Prix today here in season one. Round, um, I believe round, damn, I'm at round 12 of 19 in this career mode season. Last time out, Leclerc took his ninth consecutive race when his 10th of the season. He'll be out to make 11 wins in 12 races and break the record for the most consecutive wins. Max Verstappen will be hoping to close up to him in the standings. We had a strong race. We finished him on P7, I believe that was. Um, and Ferrari extended their lead to 100. Well, they've actually, they didn't extend their lead. Red Bull closed in a little bit last time. We closed up towards McLaren. We're down in P7 in the standings. We need to re-sign a new sponsor. Um, it, no, yeah, it was P7 where we finished last time out. Gonna go for that Lupo Industries one. Um, for again, it's a good, you know, it's got a good, um, weekly amount and a good sponsor bonus if we get the goal. Um, it's, Krub is, has gone out of my mind exactly what the sponsor goal is. It's something about scoring points and finishing, it's something about finishing in the top 10. That's all I really clock. Because I can't say I was really paying too much attention just now when it was on the screen. You know, if I'm being perfectly honest, putting sponsorship logos on the car, because I haven't done that yet. Um, and uh, by the way, I will get the team name changed eventually. I have not done that yet. Um, my old save is deleted. I can change it. I could could have changed it anyway, but I didn't for, for a little bit because I saw the old broken save. Didn't want to cause any possible confusion. But anyway, haven't done that yet. That'll be done for next episode for Belgium. Uh, so that will be good. Uh, but yeah, last time out it was, um... The retirement for Carlos Sainz, his third mechanical retirement of the season. It was a victory for his teammates. It was a 2-3 for Red Bull. It's Perez getting his first podium of the season. And the Max Verstappen rounding out the podium places in P3. It was Lewis Hamilton in fourth, but P5 was... Who was P5? I actually don't know who was P5 last episode. I have it pulled up on my other screen here. Is this the, how things ended up last episode, but... I think this is ever so slight. I ever so slightly screwed up on my place on my naming of it. It's ever so slightly. I think it was Russell in P5. It was Russell in P5. For some reason, I have it down as P7. For some reason, I have it down that Russell finished P7 when he actually finished P6. P6. Or P5, rather. Norris was P6 and we were P7. Can't really do anything there, still waiting for an upgrade to come in, so we're kind of ball- Again, we're bottlenecked on the upgrades. Ever so slightly bottlenecked. Um, can't really do much, to be honest. We are bottlenecked at the moment, and it's annoying. Uh, but yeah, despite what that spreadsheet said, as our front nose upgrade has finally and thankfully come in, thank god, gonna look at that beam wing upgrade 15% off with the bonuses from uh, practice programs and all that. But yeah, on that spreadsheet, despite the saying Russell finished in P7, he did not even finish P6. And we're also going to do that ignition system upgrade on the engine side of things. Get the engine upgraded a bit more, even though it's pretty good. Oh, it be. Yeah, I, I really don't care. Uh, but that's how the R&D looks at this present moment. Mercedes closing up towards the top two. Maybe they can try and get involved this weekend in the fight for pole position. Because they were rather unexpectedly in the fight for pole position in Hungary um, last month, about a month ago. When Russell just came out of nowhere for that pole position. And it was like, boom, they, he was right there. And of course in Spa, they were like 1.8 seconds off the pace. They were like 1.8 seconds off pole or something like that. Um, I read, I think, quite a bit of the problems Ferrari and Mercedes had. And the reason why Red Bull was dominant in Spa was something to do with compression at Eau Rouge. And having to raise the cards a little bit higher than it was originally calculated or something like that. And then that kind of put... It put Mercedes and Ferrari of her kind of more out of the window of the of like being able to produce the downforce required from the floor and had to run like stiffer suspension or something like that. But with Red Bull running down a little bit higher, could still generate their peak downforce, as Latifi says, the early pace in this qualifying session right here. Then is immediately beaten by Valtteri Bottas by over a second in the Alfa Romeo. Um, we're just could have taken that chicane a lot better. We've got a Red Bull behind us. I'm not entirely sure which one, but there's a Red Bull behind us. Speaking of Red Bull, it might even be Max Verstappen. I don't know. Why is it so warm? God, why is it so warm in here? Maybe because it's like crazy sunny outside. It's not even that it's like a really, really... It's not that it's like a boiling day. You know, it's not 
Hey, it's no heat, but it's no cold. If that makes any sense, it's like, but it's pretty warm in here. I don't know, maybe it's because our door is closed. Uh, but of course, to lessen the amount of, you know, echo, it's magnets and goes quickest overall. We've got the DRS, we're making the runs of the line, we go second fastest, and Brax was to me, even make that third, but Stappen's gone quickest. He was quickest. We're down in P11, Armstrong is in 13th at the moment. He could be on for Q2. I hope we're going to be on for Q2. I'm trying to improve my time at this present moment in time up towards the end of sector one. We're going to see the sector split and we're just about two tenths down on Hamilton. But as long as we're, we keep ourselves out of the bottom six, we're okay, but that's not going to help. Looping it around. Thankfully, we didn't hit the barrier, but we that is counterproductive. Just going to let some people go past. Let the Aston Martin go past. We're just going to try to try get back underway. Um, but failing miserably and still spinning a bit further down the way, not breaking our rear wing as we're just trying to get back to the pit lane. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to get back to the freaking pit lane. That's all I'm trying to do is get back to the fucking pit lane. But the rear tires are having absolutely none of it. There goes Sergio Perez. I think that's hitting P5. Uh, McLaren behind us. That is Ricardo. Russell, I think that is, or one of the Mercedes cars slowing down horribly there. Uh, the other one coming up behind. Hopefully we should make it back into the pit lane now. The tires are cooked. The tires are absolutely cooked. Um, as our teammate has made it into the top 16, he's in Q2. George Russell is a 10 place grid penalty. Carl, then someone else has a penalty. Esteban Ocon has a 5 place penalty. Joe Guan Yu has a 5 place penalty and Nicholas Latifi has a 5 place penalty. Why is there so many penalties? Who did illegal, illegal blocking at the end? Okay then, I maybe know when Russell got one of his, when he freaking slowed down right at the end, but okay then, so four drivers have penalties, one of them is George Russell who has a 10 place penalty. He ain't getting pole position, I can guarantee you of that. He's not going to be able to repeat the feat they did. In um, real life, Hungary, Perez goes quickest so far in this Q2 session. But either way, we move on. And we move on to the end of the lap on used tires here. Uh, just getting a bag, just getting a time on the board, just setting a time as we kept it close to the inside there. And now the DRS opens up for us and we're going to make the run to the line. And we've gone P10, about 10th behind Joe and just behind our teammate. Leclerc is quickest at the moment, moment from the two Mercedes, Perez, Sainz, Verstappen, Norris, Alonso, Ricardo, Magnussen is the top 10. 1.2 seconds exactly separating P1 from P10. We're a little bit further down the order, we're in P16, two seconds off the pace, but, pardon me. Um, we, uh, that was on soft tires. That was on new, t uh, used tires, that run. As my first run in Q2 tends to be. This is the new tire run, so this is the run that counts, but we're already half a tenth down. My run through the last corner was clearly crap. That was clear for anyone to see that my run through the final corner was shit. Um, and now the most useless DRS on the freaking cal- One of the most useless DRS on the calendar that between turns one and two, honestly. But we're one and a half tenths up on our previous best effort as the checker flag has fallen on this Q2 session. Uh, we're gonna see the first sector split right here, and we're main, minorly up on Vettel. This, we just need to go full send. We're not up by much, but we are up. Flooring it out of turn five, gaining a bit of time into the chicane at the top of the hill here. Easy to get this wrong. Attacking the curb on the exit, we're gaining more time. We're six tenths up on our previous best effort as we head through this sector. We need to place the car correctly, or else you can lose a whole lot of time and momentum. Place a car wrong, car wrong for one corner and you can lose so much time and momentum through that bit. You need to get it absolutely right. We're now three tenths up on Vettel out of that middle sector. We'd have a very good middle sector on this lap. Now just two corners to go, two long 180 degree corners uh, to go make that one. We're then to turn 14. We go keeping it tight to the inside, trying to get back on the power. As we open up the DRS, we're almost a second up on our previous best ever as we cross the line. And we just made it. We just made it into Q2, Q3. By what? Just on, just under two tenths of, a, just over two tenths of a second. We make it through. Our teammate does not improve. He was starting in P15. Uh, but apart from that, no surprises in Q go heading into Q3. The Ferraris, the Mercedes, the Red Bulls, the McLarens, and Alpine, and ourselves. Um, but now it's time to head out for our first run. 
of Q3 here in this Hungarian Grand Prix qualifying session. Again, it's a new, it's a used tire run, not new. It's, I actually don't know what kind of tire they're on right now. I don't know if this is new or used. It's a kind of tires. It's a kind of tire. I, I don't know what kind of tire, but I know it's a kind of, it's a kind of soft tire. That's how much I know. That's what I know and that's what I'm going for. And Russell goes on to provisional pole at the present moment in time, but he will not be staying on pole position. He won't be getting pole position. The highest he can start is 11th as Verstappen beats his time by 10th of a second to do an 18-3 round this Hungarian Grand Prix race circuit. That's immediately beaten by half a set by over half a second by Carlos Sainz by like, what, eight tenths? It's like seven and a half tenths Carlos is beaten by. My God, man. Uh, but we're on a decent lap here. Again, I don't know what kind of tires it is. I don't know if it's new or used. I cannot remember what I did. Whether I did new tires or used tires. I'm none the fucking wiser, to be fairly honest with you. I can't remember. There's the other Ferrari of Charles Leclerc behind us. There's an Alpine ahead of us. Uh, the DRS opens up for us and we're going to make the run to the line. We go fifth fastest, half a second down on Daniel Ricciardo. It's Charles Leclerc, about two tenths ahead of Lewis Hamilton. We're down in ninth place at the moment. Russell is down there as well. He's clearly, his time could have been better, could have been worse. Clearly. Uh, but we're going to see if we can improve our time here and get a better, better start in position than ninth on the grid. There is rain on the way for the Grand Prix, by the way. There is rain forecast for basically the entire race. So that's spectacular. As out the first corner, not a great run through turn one. We're about, we're almost a tenth down on our previous best effort. So not a great way to start off this lap. And going deep in turn two is not going to help us at all. We're now two tenths down on our previous best as the checker flag has fallen. But we are gaining. We gained back a little bit of time on the run through turn three. We had a bad entry into turn into two, but a good exit. And now people are improving ahead of us, but we're now spinning exactly where we spun at turn on Q1. Ay, 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 ay. But there goes qualifying. Couldn't improve. I I think that's like the third time I've spun at that corner. I spun there on F1 2020. Yeah, F1 2020. I spun there, I think. It could have been 2021. I think it was season one on F1 2020. My team. I spun at that exact corner. Um, and then I, I think I then spun uh, the chicane as well. But just after that. But anyway. Two spins and ninth place on the grid in total in that qualify in that whole qualifying session. Q1, 2, and 3. It's Charles Leclerc on Paul Lewis Hamilton. Seven-time world champion alongside him. Sergio Perez and Lando Norris are behind that. Then Carlos Sainz alongside his former teammate in second place in the championship, Max Verstappen. He's not having a good qualifying session where he would need to. Well, he, mind you, he won from 10th here about a month ago in real life, so he could still be on for the win, but he's got his work cut out for him in the rainy conditions to come in the race. Fernando Alonso and Daniel Ricciardo are ahead of us. We're alongside, we'll be alongside um, Kevin Magnussen, I think, but let's head to the grid. Welcome to Budapest once again for another round of Formula One action. Historically, a good race for first time victories with Button, Hill, Alonso and Heike Kovalainen all reaching the top step of the podium for the very first time right here. The Hungaro ring, it's like Monaco without the boats, although the boats today could come in very handy. 14 corners, six to the left and eight to the right, and some very tricky corners to deal with. These rainy conditions out there aren't going to help either, so it's very likely we'll see a safety car or two during today's race. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday and it's put him on pole, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Norris, Carlos Sainz, and Verstappen, Fernando Alonso, Ricardo, the owner driver, and Kevin Magnussen, Vettel, Armstrong, Lance Stroll, and Gasly. Ocon, they've taken a grid penalty. Mick Schumacher, Alex Albon, and Guan Yu Zhou. Sonoda, Russell, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Bottas and Nicholas Latifi. With preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. 
It's not going to be plain sailing for our drivers today. Although with the sky falling as it is, perhaps sailing isn't too far from the truth. And Natalie Pinkham, good to have you with us here today. Your thoughts? It is a touch damp, isn't it? As a driver, there are three big things to worry about when racing in these conditions. Standing water, tire temperature, and visibility. Judging distance to the cars around you is really tricky when you're driving through the vast amounts of spray that these wet weather Pirelli tires kick up. Well, cheers, lads. Jeff still isn't saying anything. It's pissing it down. It's going to be pissing it down for the whole race. And I'm not entirely convinced by that pit stop. Listen, you know me with strategy. I like to go ballsy if I can. Can we do the whole race on one set of intermediate tires? Well, we'll find out. We'll see what it's like when we get to around by lap 17 and go from there. That's my plan on the strategy. Right then, the formation lap has started. And I must say, the weather conditions aren't the best today for visibility and for grip. As each driver performs this lap, they'll be wanting to settle in and concentrate. As this race, in these conditions, will require a lot of focus. Yeah, it, it does, and it did. When I was doing this race, it required a lot of focus. It required a lot of focus. As the cars come back towards the grid to line up for the start of the race, each driver will be wanting to get the best start they possibly can. And they'll be hoping to finish today's race on the podium, failing that within the points. Good start! Pardon me, on this game, in these conditions, are you having a laugh? Crofty, are you... Take that comedy routine on the fucking road. I won't be getting a good start, that's for damn sure. Because I never do in these conditions. Because I, or I, on this game in general, I'm just shite at starts. Honestly, good comedy routine there, mate. Good one. But either way, we're just waiting for um, Nicholas Latifi to park it up on the back row of the grid. And I was right, we are alongside Kevin Magnuson. We've got our teammate just a couple places behind us in P13, promote a few places from penalties for others. Well, let's see what's going to happen as the lights are going to be going out now for Hungary in the Grand Prix. We're racing at the Hungaro ring. It's a shaky start for us, but it's not terrible. Okay, no, it is terrible. It is terrible. Our teammate's had a good start. He's challenging for points. If there's someone on our inside, we're going to dive in, back down the inside into turn when we're alongside Ricardo and Alonso on the exit, trying to pull ahead of these guys. Can we gain many positions? Alonso gets back ahead of us. Ricardo is still right there on our inside as they're all squabbling away over the opening positions. We're on the inside of Ricardo, staying ahead of the Australian driver. Pierre Gasly trying to get involved as well as Perez and Hamilton fight over second place. Perez gets the advantage. Hamilton's in third. Sainz and Norris are squabbling, were squabbling over fourth place. Verstappen was in there as well with Norris. And then it's Alonso ahead of ourselves. Alonso around the back of these guys, actually. As Leclerc's already got a 1.7 second lead out front from Sergio Perez. Lewis Hamilton's in third place. Carlos Sainz is fourth. Behind them. I need to turn on my fan because it's really freaking warm. Um, Lana Norris is in 5th place, Max Verstappen is running in P6, sorry if you can hear a fan in the background, it's really warm. Fernando Alonso is in 7th, just ahead of ourselves, we're in 8th place, gaining 1 place off the start. Daniel Ricciardo is in 9th, ahead of Pierre Gasly, who rounds out the top 10 at this present moment in time. Ricciardo looking down our inside, he's looking for the position. We almost make contact, but we don't. But we can see we're already over a second behind Fernando Alonso. And we're going a little bit wide in the penultimate corner, but we keep ahead in Tanya Ricardo um, as we come to the final corner to complete the first lap of what will be a very, very long race. Pardon me. Uh, to be honest, that was that's most, my race is, oh my god, this race is Magnus and Stroll's going a little bit wide there. He almost makes contact with George Russell. Stroll was horribly wide there. And he lost, like, what, three positions there? He was trying to gain a place, I think, but then he, or he was defending a place or something like that. As uh, Gasly's now ahead of Ricardo. We're almost three seconds back from Alonso. We're over three seconds back from Alonso. As Russell is pressurizing the other Alpine of Esteban Ocon for 20! For nothing, for 16th, rather. But now he's out of the race. Um, after fucking misjudging his breaking point is my best guess. It's misjudged the breaking point. Yep. Misjudged breaking in a rather dodgy collision box. Now you see that's still there. Uh, but safety car is out and now we're going to an almost halt because Delta. 
Everyone's almost at a halt because of the Delta. My god. You can see even on the main street they were almost halting. Because to, for the sake of the Delta, my god. But the safety car is now out because of that. Because of George Russell retired. It's been a day to forget for George Russell. Hopefully for Mercedes, Hamilton can go a little bit better. He tends to go quite... This is one of them tracks where if Hamilton doesn't go well, you start to worry. There's a couple tracks like that. Hungary, Canada, if Hamilton doesn't go well at those tracks, you start to worry. But we're getting very back underway. Leclerc has bolted already. As the safety car is in the pit lane, we're looking at the outside of London. This is a prime opportunity to gain a place and try and get ahead of the span here and here. As P7 is my aim for this race. Yeah, 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 Jeff, I know that. We're right on the back of Fernando Alonso. They make the run down towards the first corner. And we're going to try and go for the move down the inside. We lock up a little bit. We've gone a little bit deep. Pierre Gasly's going to try and get involved as well as he swoops on past Fernando Alonso. And Gasly might try and challenge us on the run downwards towards turn number two. He's on our outside, but we're on the inside. And we're going to try and hold on to that position. Fernando Alonso is going to try and follow us through and try and get back past the Frenchman. Who's still challenging us through turn three. We're going to go off horribly wide. But gain a, if we keep our position. And Daniel Ricciardo is now getting involved in fancy the chance of getting past Fernando Alonso. Our teammate on trying to get past her under pressure from Joe Guan Yu. I think under pressure from Joe Guan Yu. I think, but don't quote me on that. I'm not too sure about the order. Back here, Armstrong trying to stay ahead, trying to stay in P13, not either way. Um, and can he stay in the position? No, Joe's behind him. Yes, he can. Now he's challenging Sebastian Vettel. Is Armstrong. He is having a good race so far today. And you love to see you love to see your teammate doing well. And Armstrong is getting his elbows out, trying to get past the four-time world champion. He's still alongside him as they head out of a turn 11, I believe that was. Now he's behind him. He's had to yield on that one. But he will for sure, I'm sure, be coming back at him before too long. As a bit farther down the field has been Alcon and Latifi doing battle over 16th place and they're fighting over the wooden spoon with Valtteri Bottas and Alex Albon fighting over 20th place 20th and last in this Grand Prix fighting over a scarf to save the wooden spoon uh, because well they're not really fighting they're not really fighting over they're just it's 20th place it's not for points it's just for you know fuck it why not we need to try and get up the field well that is whoever was in 21st one to get up the field and that is a mega dive from Alex Albon holy shit he sent it on Yuki Tsunoda, bloody hell man. The man who made his car, has made a two meter wide Formula 1 car, but six meters wide last weekend in Belgium, is currently trying to get Yuki Tsunoda for 19th place, but Tsunoda's gonna hold on to that one. As Alonso and Gasly are doing battle over 8th place, so who's gonna, it's Alonso that's gonna come out on top in that one. As Armstrong's go trying for Vettel again, round the outside of turn number 5. He is getting his elbows out today, is Marcus Armstrong. He is going for it. Are they still side by side? Yes, they are through the chicane. It's not a place you normally see side by side action. And they say you can't overtake here. Well, Armstrong has not got the overtake done. But you can overtake here. And back with ourselves on lap number six. You can see we're almost 10 seconds behind Max Verstappen. But in my defense, this car was like. Put it this way, on this track in these conditions, my dad's boat would handle better than this fucking car. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with the lawn that looks around the outside of the of ourselves. We're str I am struggling in these conditions, I'm not gonna lie. Hungary's never been my best track, the wet weather's never been my best uh, weather conditions. Um, and you can tell by how much we've fallen back so quickly. I am struggling. It's also a case of just looking after the tires as well, because I'm aiming for no stops. That's my aim for this race. Of course, I have a little bit of breathing space there, though. They kind of squeeze Alonso out on the outside there. As I just have a bit of a drink there to not completely kill my throat. But Alonso is back right on our gearbox. We're basically, we're basically channeling our inner Alex Albon. Except it's a lot easier here than it would have been for Alex. Because this track isn't so much about straight line speed, you just bolt on down fours and hope for the best. As Alonso's gonna fire it up the inside at 11. That did not work out for him. We fended him off on that one. He went for it though, he absolutely went for it. 
he wasn't gonna hold back on that one. But he's not gonna give up. There's no such thing as an easy over or easy defense from Fernando Alonso. He's right on our tail. He's not gonna be... We make one slip up, he's gonna be through. We're gonna defend the inside line. As Alonso goes out a little bit wide there, he's gonna lose position. Is Kevin Magnussen gonna be able to have an opportunity? He's gonna be looking, but Pierre Gasly is looking at us to try and get past and up into seventh place and try and probably close up towards Max Verstappen. There's Sebastian Vettel getting involved in the background as we fend off against Pierre Gasly. Vettel's going for Alonso for tenth place. He's got the move done. Oh, maybe Alonso, I think he's probably going to try and come back at him. No, he's not. We're fending off Gasly, who's under pressure from Ricardo trying to get involved. Gasly's going out wide. And that's Ricardo now right on our tail. Time for Ricardo to have a go. Vettel up in the ninth place. Ricardo having a look up the hill. Um, but we defend that one off brilliantly. And hold on to our position as Joel's having a go at our teammate through at turn five here. We're going for up the hill. They're now continuing it. Onwards through, turn, um, onwards towards turn six and seven, the chicane at the top of the hill here. Ricardo's going for it on us, but we defend the position through the chicane. Brilliantly defended as Sonoda and Ocon, I believe, are going for it. As it's also the same as it was up front. Gasly on our inside, 11, we're making a bit of contact as Leclerc says the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. That did not work out well for Pierre Gasly. Didn't work out well for him as Kevin Magnussen with the massive dive bomb down the inside. Holy shit! As you see, Armstrong's dropped down a few places now. We didn't see it happen, but he's dropped down to P17 now. But Kevin Magnussen, bloody Nora, man. He fucking went for it. He absolutely went for it. But anyway... Back to this, um, he's got past Daniel Ricardo. He has got past Daniel Ricardo. Now, for, now Sebastian Vettel is going for a massive dive bomb. He's now with the AI are absolutely sending it today. Maybe they got pissed off at me calling them idiots last time. I don't know, either way, Sebastian Vettel trying to get past Kevin Magnussen. He's trying, he's trying to go the long way around in turn three. It's gonna be the short way for turn four. Uh, can he get that move done? He was a little bit twitchy. Uh, no, Kevin Magnussen has held on to that one. He's held off the challenge, held on to the position. Daniel Ricciardo getting back involved on his former teammate. But Vettel's going to stay ahead now. Alonso's trying to get by the Australian. Um, up the hill here. Can he get it done? He's going to keep his foot in, in towards turn six. It's Fernando Alonso. Of course he is. Armstrong's pulling out to have a goal of someone, I think. Yes, he is. He's having a go at Esteban Ocon, I think, or he was at least trying to. As uh, Alonso still trying to clear Daniel Ricciardo over um, the uh, 11th place at this present moment in time. Ricciardo, can he get the move done? Is he going to be able to fend off, rather? He does fend off. Um, as back with ourselves, we've still got Pierre Gasly right on into lap 11 here of 35 of the Grand Prix. Try, still just trying to keep Gasly behind us, just keep cars behind us, that's the general aim. That's basically all I'm trying to do, is just keep cars behind me. But where Gasly is looking down the inside to make a bit of contact with him, but his front wing has clearly made a steal because I see no damage. Um, he's still right on our tail, but can he go a little bit defensive? But when we fend them off and that invites Kevin Magnussen through to have a go for over P8 this is for. If those two start battling, that could give us a little bit of breathing space for a few corners. Gasly's gone wide. He's not going to be under pressure, maybe, from Sebastian Vettel in the background, and especially Daniel Ricciardo alongside him. But could Vettel maybe try and get himself involved as they head down the main straight? What can Kevin Magnussen do to try and get ahead of ourselves here? We're going to have to find out. We're going to have to wait and find out. Uh, Kevin Magnussen still in. 8th place in this Grand Prix, Dan Ricardo in 10th, behind that, behind that, Pierre Gasly, Magnussen out looking on the inside, we're a little bit wide and deep. Look how far ahead Verstappen is, he is 38 seconds ahead of us and we're on lap 12. I sense something a little bit like Monaco is coming where the, where the top 5 or 6 are going to be la try, trying to lap everybody else. Behind the train that's headed by me, uh, Zania Ricardo and Sebastian Vettel doing battle down the hill here towards turn number two. Of course, these guys were teammates in 2014 at Red Bull. Um, Daniel Ricciardo came out on top in that season. He outscored Vettel 
Um, I pull, out positioned him in the races as well. He's won out this time as well. Fernando Alonso, former championship rival with Sebastian as well. He's behind him and Kevin Magnussen still right on our tail in um, eighth place. As again, our defensive driving continues. We're just holding up. We're just leading a train as the gap is massive. It's still Leclerc leading by almost two seconds to Sergio Perez. He's really picked up his game in the last two races. It's true, to, you have to say, he's picked up his game. Hamilton's about a second and a half back from that. He's got Carlos Sainz for company, Lando Norris, ahead of Max Verstappen, and now it's Fernando Alonso trying to get past Sebastian Vettel and succeeding in getting past Sebastian Vettel. Very much so. It's back with a South Magnus and sends it up the inside at 11, as many others have tried but failed. And once again, it's been a failure for Kevin Magnus. He's having to go defensive to the inside. You can see it on the minimap. He was going defensive against Gasly. He has succeeded in going defensive against Gasly. Got us, earned us a little bit of breathing space, but end of lap 15, they are right back on our tail. And Magnussen gonna be looking down this main street, gonna be looking to try and find a way past. Uh, we're gonna defend on the inside line, just place our car absolutely brilliantly. Okay, some people might complain for weaving on the straights or blah, blah, blah. It's a game, chill. I moved over. Then I moved back. It's fine. You know, and there was no contact. There was no contact. There wasn't sudden movements. But in it, anyway, Magnussen under pressure from Daniel Ricciardo. He's been invited back into this, into this um, train that goes from P7 all the way down to 21st and last. Fucking hell, man. Honestly, madness so far. Just not really madness. Just defending like crazy for me. And it's causing a ton of position swapping right behind me. I, I thought Ricardo was going to go for it there for a second, but he's not. I thought he was, but he did not. He looked like he was going for it, as did Kevin Mags, and I thought K-Mag wanted to send it. Um, as, look at that. You can see with the mini-map as Ricardo goes for it. I put on the full map there just to show you the madness that this is. That this is. It's like Monaco IRL. When, when there was like the top six, then it's Alon the top five, then Alonso and the rest of the field, like half a lap behind. But this is the my team version, it's Gasly's past Magnussen, now we're going horribly wide. Ricardo is going to be taking full advantage of this to try and get past us, but we're going to defend him on this, we're going to defend him brilliantly. He gets a little bit twitchy through the corner, that costs him a little bit of time. And you have to wonder, we're getting towards the pit phase, towards the pit period as Gasly tries to get past Daniel Ricciardo and I think he succeeded in doing so. Um, well, he's on the inside for turn number one, but well, you have to, there's an alternate thing, it's an easy overtake on Daniel Ricciardo sometimes. Um, Daniel Ricciardo leaving McLaren at the end of the year in real life, of course. He's still in the McLaren era, who knows where he'll be in season two of this My Team Silver we'll to see what the driver market wants to do as he's defended against Pierre Gasly for the time being, as the pit stops are starting for the lead as Perez continues on, as does Carlos Sainz. Charles Leclerc is in, Lewis Hamilton's in, is it gonna be another set of intermediate tires? Leclerc is back out, Max Verstappen is in as well. There goes Hamilton out of the pit box, Max Verstappen peeling in for his pit stop here. Um, he's changed the back out, they're all gonna be out comfortably still in the top six. Leclerc out comfortably in P4 at this present moment in time as um, we just wait and see called there this is the, this is where the train I'm at I'm heading is in as Ricardo looking down the inside uh, but we managed to fend him off on this occasion you have to imagine these guys will probably be in the pit lane at the end of this lap you'd imagine as will Sergio Perez Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris you guys who have all would Lando be in though I don't know he to be honest he probably will be yes I don't know, I'm a little bit lost as to what's going on, but Ricardo, I'm a little bit lost as to where everyone is on the track, but Ricardo leads the train into the pit lane as um, the midfield pit stops begin. So, I want to bet some of them will be very glad to no longer be stuck behind me. They can, when they get to the pit lane, they can get their foot down, uh, but I'm planning a one stop, I'm, a no stop rather. I'm planning a zero stop strategy as Gasly tells horribly. Um, quite, held quite horribly there. I wonder how much, I don't know if he's lost much ground, but is they're leaving the pit lane. Perez is entering the pit lane. Carlos Sainz will be right on his tail. You can see him there. Lando Norris will be not too far behind them. Uh, there he is. You can see him pulling in. P7 
Perez will be the first to pull into his pit box. He's going to get his tyres changed, as will Carlos Sainz. Uh, there goes Perez. Sainz is being held for Norris coming in. That looks like a tight exit from the pit box as well for Sainz. And Norris will be back out. And will anyone... Well, Leclerc is going to retake the lead. How far is the gap to Perez going to be? Where is Perez going to be behind? He is about three seconds behind or so. As Max Verstappen has gone past Lando Norris in the pit box. That'll be good news for Red Bull. Uh, but as things stand, Verstappen is still going to be losing quite a bit of ground to Leclerc in the standings right about now. Uh, so that's not ideal for Red Bull. Um, but either way, we just have to wait for some more pit stops. A lot of these guys haven't made a pit stop yet. We haven't made a pit stop, but I plan on just... Well, I should just go to the end. I'm just gonna go for go for a ballsy zero stop strategy. Surely we can make it. Surely we can make it, especially with my crap driving, my crap pace. You know, my pace isn't brilliant in these conditions of this track. As we see everybody pulling into the pit box, very busy pit lane here. Very, very busy. But what this is gonna do is our teammate pulls in for another for his pit stop. This is going to give us some breathing space for a few laps as Armstrong inserts himself in between Latifi and Sonoda, Alex Albon, the only person who allows it. Ourselves and Albon, the only people who haven't made a pit stop yet. But we're not going to make a pit stop and Albon just hasn't been into the pit lane yet. But Leclerc leads by 3.2 seconds to Perez, Hamilton the third, Sainz fourth, Verstappen fifth, Norris sixth, and we're in seventh. And that is a slow-moving Carlos Sainz. Not again for Carlos Sainz. He's had... This is his fourth mechanical retirement of the season. His second of the... He retired of the mechanical issue last time. He's had another one. Oh, God. You gotta feel for Sainz. The most DNFs of anyone this season now. With four. But that has brought out the virtual safety car. As you can see on the panels, as again, we're having to come to pretty much a stop for the sake of the Delta. Um, because the Delta is being a bastard. Uh, but either way, it is what it is, but the VSE is ending. It is ended. We're racing once again, and we have lost a bit of ground to Ricardo. Why was the VSE out? They haven't moved the fucking car. The VSC was out for literally like a few corners, then it came in again, and the car isn't even fucking moved. But okay, my goal was P7, now it's P6. I'll take it. I will take it. But lap 23, we've once again got Ricardo around until looking around the outside of turn 11. Trying something different. Normally they're trying for the inside, but Ricardo was fancy in the outside line. To be fair, we were defending the inside. The gap to Norris is now over a minute. And Leclerc's catching up to the back of the pack. That is Joe Guan Yu, not too far ahead of him. He has caught the back of the pack here. I sent something around, something like Monaco's about to happen. As uh, we go horribly wide, we managed to keep Ricardo behind us. Maybe chopping across him a little bit there. Uh, but whatever. Shit happens. And there was no contact. At least I don't think there was anyway. Uh, but either way, it's Vettel and Alcon doing battle over 11th place. These two fought for the win of Hungarian Grand Prix. Um, last year, in real life, Alcon holding off Vettel lap after lap. They're banging tires. They never got that close in Hungary last year. Of course, Vettel later on disqualified for uh, failing to be able to provide an adequate fuel sample at the end of the race. And um, for that reason, maybe it's a good thing that Alcon won and not Vettel. Because if Vettel won, but then got disqualified, there would have been fucking outcry. There was outcry anyway, but my point remains. But down towards turn one, Vettel on the inside trying to see if he can squeeze ahead of Esteban Ocon, and he can do so. Ocon now in a bit of a bit of an Aston Martin sandwich as he looks to come back, but can't quite come back. As the gap between Perez and Leclerc has come down, I'm going to assume that's had something to do with back markers. Uh, because that is, I believe, Yuki Tsunoda just ahead of Leclerc. He's lapped Joe, he's lapped Schumacher. And now he's going to be lapping uh, Sonoda. Then it'll be our teammate up next for him to lap in P17. As they just try and file their way through these back marker traffic. Again, this is going to be something like Monaco. Where just people... It was a massive train behind me in P5, in P5. And then they were just trying to all make their way through the leaders. 
uh, but back at ourselves, not having been lapped yet, um, we've got Ricardo still right on our tail. We've got a little bit of a gap um, at this present moment in time. Um, but mind you, that gaps do close. Gaps will very, very soon close. And Ricardo is right on our tail and approaching at lightning speed. He's on the inside of the corner. Ricardo, who has won in Hungary before back in 2014, got his second win here at the Hungaro Ring. Back in 2014, we fend him off this time around, kind of push him back into Alonso and Magnus in there with a slightly ampere and Gasly, as they're all bunched up back there. Uh, but it's still all as you were back there. As uh, Leclerc trying to lap Valtteri Bottas, who is not getting out of the way. Leclerc will be going mad in that car. He'll be what? He'll be wanting blue flags as Bottas is not getting out of the way. I don't know why. He'll be getting blue flags, but he's just not getting out of the way of that Ferrari car. He gets out of the way now, finally, but that gap has come down to Sergio Perez. As Perez stuck behind Bottas a little bit there, the gap has gone back up by a few tenths. But it has come down a little bit. It was over two seconds when Leclerc was approaching the back of the, Al the Alfa Romeo for a team he used to drive for back in 2018. Uh, but it's now come down quite a bit as we've still got Ricardo. Meanwhile, back with this is business as usual for this race. Or to meet Ricardo right on our tail. As Leclerc is right on the back of this train. Yeah, Jeff, I know. I know about the overtake point, Jeff, as we're trying to fend off against Ricardo. To fair, the overtake point was quite helpful in fending off against Daniel Ricardo. As I have another drink to make sure my voice doesn't completely die if we get a little bit twitchy at turn 12 there. That's going to invite Ricardo down the inside as we momentarily go down into neutral. It's all kicking off here. We're just freaking losing the will to live. We're trying to hold on to the will to be in P6 here. As Alonso's trying to get involved now, he's on our inside. We can go to the off board and see Alonso get, just getting ahead of us. Ricardo's trying to get involved as well. Kevin Magnussen is back there. And Daniel Ricardo, there's Charles Leclerc lapping Pierre Gasly, Alonso on our outside, Kevin Magnussen is going to try and follow us through and get past Fernando Alonso, as again, you can see people trying to get out of the way for Leclerc, we're having to defend against Kevin Magnussen, we're going to force him a little bit wide, we're going to try and maintain our position and let Leclerc by all in one foul swoop, as Leclerc has made it through the whole pack here, and we've let, accidentally let Kevin Magnussen pass us. As Sergio Perez is going to be the next one off to let by. He's just, um, well, he's the car behind us at this present moment in time. Uh, but to us, as middle said, you can't really let people pass here. Um, you can't really let people by in this middle sector, if I'm being perfectly honest. So Perez is going to have to freaking wait. Because you can't really let people by here. There's yellow flags behind us for whatever reason. I'm not entirely sure why there's yellow flags behind us, but I'm sure we'll find out. Pretty damn, so you can see Kevin Magnussen twitching there as Joe is retired from the Grand Prix. Perez is going to try and go by us as the safety car is now deployed. So we can't. And again, we're going to have to come to an almost a full stop to get the Delta. We're going to have to almost stop because of the Delta. Uh, this is what happened to Joe. It was a simple mechanical failure for the Chinese driver. A lot. We're about to just, I was about to just let Perez go by. I was going to go off wide, let Perez by, but we couldn't do it. He's now behind us, and I know now on the restart we're going to have to let the Mexican driver in second place by, but my main priority is to get by Kevin Magnus, and I'm going to play this smart. Get by Kevin Magnus in the process, I can let Perez lap us. Because to be fair, Magnus is going to be wanting to slow down to let Perez by. That's when we can strike as Leclerc is bolted out the final corner. We're going to be bolting as well, and we're going to try and get by Kevin Magnus, and then also at the same time let Sergio Perez go by. I know, Jeff. Shut up. I really don't care. Um, as you can see, Kevin Magnus is moving. He's maybe trying to let, move in to let Perez past him. We're wide through the corner as we're trying to get by him and let Perez lap us. This is the time to strike to try and get sixth place back in this Grand Prix. This is the time to strike as Perez is by. We're going to be trying to get back past Kevin Magnus here and let Hamilton lap us all at the same time at the corner where we got, where we got overtaken. We got overtaken by Magnus and the Leclerc lap us last time. That time around, we let Hamilton lap us and got back past. Kevin Magnussen, we're now going to have to let Max Verstappen through um, as he does eventually go through. Fourth place is by, that's not, that's not. Lado Norris behind us, that's Daniel Ricciardo side by side with Kevin Magnussen who got overtaken by the Australian driver who is now past him 
and now it's trying to get back past him and Magnuson has done it, he's got the move done. And further in the field of TV, he's fallen down a little bit. He's fallen behind Armstrong and Sonoda. Armstrong back up to P17, he was down to P19 at one point. As Ricardo and Magnuson, still doing battle with Ricardo, eh? back ahead of Magnuson actually. Um, but I'm sure Armstrong will be coming back at we trying to go for it soon as Ricardo still just behind us and the two Aston Martin drivers are side by side. Alonso and Magnussen going wheel to wheel there. Over 8th place Alonso ahead of Magnussen. Uh, there's all madness back here. It's all kicking off. We've got Ricardo right on our tail. Lando Norris is trying to get involved as well. We squeeze Ricardo out. Norris is coming through. Yeah, shut up Jeff. I know blue flags. I know blue flags. There's cars everywhere. You hardly know what's going on here. As Ricardo tries to get back past Kevin Magnussen, we're going to have to let Lando Norris pass as well because he's in fifth place, one lap ahead of us. He's on lap 33 and we're going to let him bite down the hill here. And try also at the same time keep his teammate behind us. Uh, so there's now top five back in the correct order, but the top five, top, everyone back in the correct order, but top five, one lap ahead. Uh, we've, we've kept Daniel Ricardo behind, we've kept Kevin Magnussen just behind him, but they're side by side. At this present moment in time, but Ricardo might just hold on to this when he does hold on to it. A stroll and boss has squabbling over 11th place. Armstrong is past Albon. We've missed that overtake, but he's now trying to get past uh, Sebastian Vettel. Can't quite do it. As he's now having to defend against Yuki Tsunoda. They're three wide! They were three fucking wide! Through the hair, through the chicane. I'm sorry, what? Three wide through the chicane, I've never seen that before. Okay then, fine. Three wide is apparently a thing. Through that chicane, as Armstrong, can he hold on? Yes, he can hold on ahead of Sonoda. At this present moment in time, we've got ourselves a little bit of breathing space meanwhile. As uh, Ricardo is almost a second behind us. A little bit of breathing space for us, uh, which is gonna be good. Uh, Ricardo, maybe, I don't know what, I don't know how that gap formed, as there's an Aston Martin heading into the pit lane, Lance Stroll is gonna be heading in. Uh, that's gonna promote everyone who is behind him up one place, or teammate will be up into P13, one place below where he started, two places ahead where he qualified, because of course he got promoted up a few places because of penalties for others. As Ricardo has closed right back up to us, we're gonna have to defend, this is the penultimate lap of the race, because we're one lap down. So this is the penultimate lap of the Grand Prix. We apparently had a collision with Ricardo, who's now under pressure from Kevin Magnussen, who's trying to get past him. He is through, and Ricardo has wing damage. That was unintentional. I felt nothing. I must say that. I felt no contact with Ricardo at that point. So I didn't I didn't feel any contact with him. None at all. But he's now under pressure. From Fernando Alonso, will Ricardo box at the end of the lap or will he just go to the end? There's going to be just one lap to go after this one. The course is, well, one, well, everyone is, we're all one lap down. Everybody from P6 downwards has been lapped by the top five as Armstrong. He's trying to get by Vettel once again. This is over 12th place in this Grand Prix. Vettel holds on to that one for the time being. As uh, Alonso is now past Ricardo, who's tumbling down in the order a little bit here. But he's still relatively there. With Alonso, he's still relatively there. He's now being passed by Esteban Ocon. Will Ricardo box or will he just continue on? You'd imagine, knowing the AI, he'll probably box or will he continue? No, he's boxing. Spoil sport. Ah, whatever. Each to their own. Each to their own. As Gasly trying to get ahead, trying to get ahead or stay ahead of Alexander Albon. As Magnuson is having a look at us, trying to get by us, but it's not quite going to work out for him at turn one. We hold on to him as Jeff is desperately trying to get us to box. I'm not going to freaking box, Jeff. Shut up. As Magnuson is on our inside, tries to find the, to defend the inside, but he squeezes his way down there. We're on the inside now. We've cut back across, and now that's allowed Fernando Alonso to come on through. We're three, almost three wide for a moment there. Now it's going to be a drag race. Up the hill with Lonzo, there's contact being made, Magnuson is alongside, we're through, we're going to be almost three wide there, as Magnuson has wing damage, you can see he's missing part of his front wing there, I don't know how that happened, I don't know if that was contact with us or not, Alonzo also has wing damage at this present moment in time. It's the last lap of the Grand Prix, uh, but it's been, again, it's the number 16 has been the number one today, once again, 
He's held off the pressure of the charge of the Easter with stood the bad weather and safety car restarts and is going to be, as he's going to approach the final corner, is going to be his 11th win of the season in 12 races. This is his 11th win. This is a record-breaking 10th consecutive race win for Charles Leclerc, who wins the Hungarian Grand Prix for Ferrari. Sergio Perez will be coming home in second place for a second podium in as many races. Lewis Hamilton will round out the podium in third place, but we're still racing back here. We're still trying to keep these guys behind us, the two drivers of their front wing right behind us. Alonso trying to get back past Kevin Magnus. He is through as our teammates defending against him. It's now sending it on Sebastian Vettel, who's defending against the node. He's now sending it on Vettel. Can he get this? This is for 11th place. He's got one. His results so far have been 11th and 19th. Can he make it another 11th place at this present moment in time as we're holding off Kevin Manson and Fernando Alonso at this present moment in time. Armstrong nudges marginally ahead of Vettel as we hold on against Fernando Alonso to take 7th place in this Grand Prix. And I don't know what happened there, but Armstrong is up into the points. Alonso and Magnussen were sent down the order. You saw that Alonso and Magnussen went down the order. And now Armstrong, you know, I don't care how it happened. Armstrong's in the points. Let's go. It's victory in Budapest then, and what a victory it is after an incredible Grand Prix. So, Natalie, what do you think helped them deliver this result? Well, they have a car that comes alive in the conditions that we were dealing with today. It's a very balanced package in the wet, and what that means is the drivers have confidence to attack. Having that confidence gets you on the power earlier, gets you on the brakes later, and can put you a long way up the road. Here come our winners now, a thrilling race and a tremendous effort by Ferrari. Their history is well known, so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again. So, 10th consecutive win, record-breaking 10th consecutive win for Charles Leclerc today. He's on, he's the guy on form, and you'd very much think he has got one hand very firmly on a first World Drivers' Championship. He's got his half hand firmly on, one hand firmly on that trophy, fastest lap as well. Um, almost over a second faster than anyone else. My God, over a second faster than it. Oh, yeah, well, no, not all over, over a second. I'm, re I'm reading it wrong. Four ten, three, four tens faster than anyone else. I'm reading correctly. But for the first time, our teammate is in the points, and our zero stop strategy works for us. A right treat. That that strategy did work out. It worked. When it rains, you don't have to make a pit stop. If you have, if you use the wet tires, then all rules about tire usage goes out of the freaking window. So you can do whatever you want. But anyway, we're going to look ahead to the championship standings. And at the moment, you can see that 116 points is the lead for Charles Leclerc. I worked it out. And realistically, he can win the championship as soon as Monza. And I'll tell you what. What a track that would be for him to win his first title at. In a Ferrari. A Monza. Are you fucking kidding me? Hamilton. Meanwhile, gets by his teammate in the standings after another DNF for science. We close up towards the laws. We're only six points behind him now. We're finding form. We're finding form. We've had final. We've had. Well, that's our fifth consecutive points finish. Our teammate goes up to 17th with his first points finish. Vettel's back in the points after a string of difficult races. Um, there. That's how things shape up. Verstappen's gonna need to start winning in order to, you know, have a chance. But Leclerc's got one hand firmly on that trophy. Now it's only the top four. The top four are the only ones in contention for the Drivers' Championship now. Everyone else is out of contention. Not gonna happen this season. Of course, that's what it means. That's what the whole yellow and grey boxes mean. Grey out of contention. Yellow still in with a chance. Still in contention. And the results in italics are the fastest laps. And then the plus number in brackets is, of course, the sprint race. 
results except for that P16 for Checo because oh, that was very very weird. He was classified, he DNF'd, but he crossed the line like 7th or something like that, but it was DNF'd, I don't know, but it's now just for Red Bull are the only ones who can stop Ferrari. I haven't calculated the Constructors' Championship yet on how soon Ferrari can win that, but Imagine if Ferrari win both championships of Monza. Fuck it, it wouldn't surprise- with the Formula Clores on, it wouldn't fucking surprise me. What a track it would be for them to do it at though. So many years since they've last won the titles and they can take- and they could take- well they could take one of them for sure at- as early as their home- as of Monza, the team's home race. What a track McLaren get by Haas as we close up to that battle for fifth place. Realistically the battle for fourth there. Because Alpine aren't too far ahead, um, but we'll have to just see how, th how everything works itself out as we head further on. We've got Spa next, with the Belgian Grand Prix is up next. Uh, that, one's that one's always fun. Hopefully it shouldn't be quite as bad as it was. Hopefully it should be as annoying. Spa on this game as it was on the last game. Because on the last game, the AI were godly and were freaking god tier in the high speed corners or to me and then that just they were so that meant they were godly in poo on hopefully they shouldn't be too bad this seed this year they're no longer god tier in high speed corners it's for their line speed things being sorted we should be okay but we're gonna head up to spot next time around but for now thank you for watching hope you enjoyed if you did like share comment subscribe do all those stuff i'll see you in the next video bye